Bill Nix. No, he's our version. Nix a Ranger. I have to ask the phone number for me now. 80. And before Nick starts, Mr. Malosh, would you like to come pray over Nick? Since you asked me politely, sure. Sweet. Sweet, sweet, sweet. In the Father's Son. Lord, please come to Nick tonight as he uh, gives us his words of wisdom that we uh, may be closer to you in your greatness. Amen. Amen. Thanks, buddy. Even All though right. it hurts me and it hurt. I apologize. I get competitive and uh, I like to cheat. So um, it combined for the perfect storm where I pushed you, and I apologize for that. All right. Um, what? That's a movie. The perfect storm. It's a good one. A decent one, anyway. Um, what can you guys tell me about Fatima or the apparitions of Fatima or anything really about Fatima? Fatima is in Portugal. It is in Portugal. It happened a hundred years ago. It did happen a hundred years ago. You are right. Yeah. There were apparitions at Fatima. There were apparitions. <laughs> I see a theme. I see a theme. Anything aside from this slide? Is there anything that you can tell me aside from that slide? Yeah. What's a Fatima? Fatima. Fatima is a place in Portugal. It's oh, a it's a, so it's a city. It's, it's a small town. Yeah, well, it's a little bigger now, but yeah. Anything else? Fatima is a city in Portugal, which is in a, which is in Europe. Yes, you are right. You are it's right. Actually, on the anything else? There was a girl in my old school named Fatima. Oh yeah. yeah. Okay. Mary appeared there. Mary appeared there. Okay, so I think it's safe to say that uh, most people don't know a whole lot about Fatima or Our Lady of Fatima or the apparitions at Fatima. Am I correct in saying that? No. I don't want. I don't want to offend yes. anyone, but. Am I correct in saying that? I no, yeah. believe so. You're not. Okay. All right. No more questions. There's no more answers. Children. Okay. So, the apparitions at Fatima. Okay. They did happen a hundred years ago. Hundred years ago this year, actually. Okay. So, the world in 1917. Okay. We were in the midst of the First World War. Okay. The Titanic had sunk only five years earlier. Okay. Uh, Father Eugenio <coughs> Pacelli. Okay. Doesn't really mean much. He was ordained a bishop in that year. Okay, he's just a, a priest being ordained a bishop. Not really an eventful event or a large event in this grand scheme of the world in that year. But he would go on to become Pope Pius the Twelfth. Okay, and like I said, the First World War. Okay, the worst war in the history of the world up to that point. Okay, over 37 million lives lost. Okay. Despite all the chaos that was going on in the world, okay, uh, if you haven't learned about the First World War, uh, there's a reason why they call it the World War. The world was in chaos, okay? Everyone was involved in this war, okay? And, and it consumed everyone, okay? Whether you were here in North America, you were working to support soldiers overseas, okay? If you were in Europe, you were in the midst of the war. It was chaos. It was, it was utter chaos all over the world. Despite that, in a small town in Fatima, Portugal, Mary appeared to three children, Lucia, Francisco, and Jacinta. So Francisco and Jacinta, uh, they were brother and sister. And Lucia was their cousin. Okay, so they were all related. They were shepherds. Okay, they were shepherds in a small town in Portugal. And from May 13th until October 13th, 1917, Mary appeared those three children okay and what Mary said was prophetic it was prophetic in prophetic means that it accurately describes future events so what Mary said was prophetic okay she predicted events that were to happen okay <clears throat> and Mary's messages always focused on praying the rosary for our sins and for the sins of the world okay it wasn't enough just to pray for ourselves but Mary said that we need to pray for the sins of the world, the transgressions of the world, to save souls. Okay? So I'm just going to very briefly go through. She, she visited on the 13th of each month, okay? From May till October. Okay? And I'm just going to very briefly go through each month. And then we're going to wrap it up and see how it applies. 
okay? Because if you're like me, when I was in high school, history was my least favorite course, okay? I really didn't like history, okay? And when, when, the to when this topic came up, uh, I kind of struggled with it, to be honest with you, because I have a hard time. I mean, obviously history is important and it's good to know what happened in the past. But for something like this, uh, I wanted to make sure that it wasn't just a boring history lesson because what's being taught here, what Mary said 100 years ago, is actually more relevant today than it was 100 years ago. Okay, what she said 100 years ago uh, applies more to us today than it did uh, 100 years ago. So, what did she say? May 13th, okay? May 13th, uh, Mary appears to three children. The children don't, she doesn't say that, hey, I'm Mary, what's up? Okay, she doesn't say that. The children don't really know who she is, okay? But she says, I am going to reveal myself on October 13th, not only to you, but to the whole world. On October 13th, there will be a miracle for all to believe what I am going to tell you in these coming months. Okay? So, Mary's message. Imagine, imagine this, first of all, let's, let's take it aside for a second, okay? Imagine this, you're young, seven, eight, nine years old, okay? And, and Mary appears to you, okay? Uh, and she doesn't kind of ease you into it. No, she starts like going at like these huge points. What would you do as like a seven, eight, or nine year old? Like that would be like insane, insane. So Mary says, recite the rosary for the end of the war. Remember, they were in the midst of the worst war in the history of the world. Recite the rosary every day for the end of the war. Recite the rosary in reparation for the sins of the world. So this is where the in she introduces the notion that it's not enough just to pray for ourselves. We need to be praying for all the mistakes that other people are making too. Okay? She then says, a pope will come that will suffer greatly for the sins of the world. Okay, and this was a prophetic message. Okay, this was a prophetic statement. Okay, a pope will come that will suffer greatly for the sins of the world. And we'll get back to that line, okay? And then she concludes by saying, come back on the next month, on the 13th, and come back every month on the 13th. And on October 13th, I will perform a miracle so that the world believes my words, is what she said. Okay? On June 13th, she says, Jesus wishes to establish a devotion to the Immaculate Heart of Mary. Okay? Well, that's good. We're back. All right. She says, and I quote, this is a quotation, this is the words of Mary. Okay? The words of Mary. I promise salvation to those who embrace it, meaning the Immaculate Heart of Mary, my Immaculate Heart if I'm using the words of Mary. And their souls will be loved by God as flowers placed by myself to adorn his throne. She then says, The world will greatly suffer, but don't be discouraged. I will not abandon you. My immaculate heart will be a refuge, and through it will conduct you to God. So this was the first time that, that anyone had heard of the immaculate heart of Mary. Okay, does anyone know what the immaculate heart of Mary is? refers to, obviously, Mary's Immaculate Heart, obviously. <laughs> Anyone want to try and dive a little deeper into the meaning? Okay. Fortunately, I have a handy handy little chart for you right here, all right? So, this is the Immaculate Heart of Mary. There's many images, different drawings, paintings, uh, <coughs> clay sculptures, apparently, okay? Um, they're all over. So if you search like Immaculate Heart of Mary on Google Images, you'll find a whole bunch, okay? And there's four symbols that, that encompass the Immaculate Heart of Mary. The first one is her heart, obviously, okay? Symbolizes her maternal love, okay? Her love of God, her love of Jesus, and her love for us, okay? The fire uh, is her heart burns with love for Jesus and us, and, and everything that she does, her, her whole being, her whole... Uh, her whole essence is directed to leading us to her son. Okay? The sword symbolizes Mary's sorrows. Okay? If you read in the Gospels, uh, Simeon, when they bring Jesus to the temple, uh, when he's a little baby, to present him to the temple, okay? Uh, Simeon uh, says, at last, I behold, I've, I've seen the Savior of the world. Okay? I can, I can go in peace. God promised him that he wouldn't die until he saw the Savior. 
Okay, and so he says that, and then he turns to Mary and says, uh, essentially, I'm paraphrasing, but he says, your heart will be pierced as, as like a sword for the sorrow that you, will, that you will come to know. Okay, so the sword symbolizes Mary's sorrow. Okay, and the roses represent her purity. Okay, there's always flowers surrounding her heart. Okay, so the Immaculate Heart of Mary in, in one sentence is a devotion to the joys, I mean, you can read it there, you probably have, the joys, the sorrows, the virtues, the love of God and Jesus, and the compassion for all people. So if you focus on uh, Mary's joys, if you just think for one second, what was Mary joyful about? The answer is Jesus, okay? What was Mary sorrowful about? Jesus, his crucifixion, his death, his suffering. He was innocent and he suffered, that's a huge sorrow. The virtues, the gifts of God that made her a holy woman. Gifts of God from essentially Jesus, since he's the second person of the Trinity. Okay? If you focus on Mary's love of God and Jesus and her compassion for all people, all of those things point you towards Jesus. All of those things point you towards Jesus. And this is one of the biggest misconceptions. I'm going to play a video at the end uh, that kind of dives further into this notion, but this is the misconception. Uh, of, of being Catholic. They think that we worship Mary. Okay? Uh, everyone thinks that we worship Mary. We don't worship Mary. Okay? But we see her, first of all, as the mother of God, so she deserves to be respected as such. And also we recognize... Sorry, was I in the way, Tom? Ah, uh, the podium. Okay. All right. So we also recognize that not only is she the mother of God, but that her whole being, like I just said, points us to her son. All she wants... All she wanted was to bring everyone to her son. That's all she wants. Okay? So the Immaculate Heart of Mary is a reflection on Mary's life and on her, her, her being. Okay? But it ultimately points us beyond Mary to her son. Okay? Are there any questions? Good. Okay. All right. July 13th. We're moving on. Okay? Mary gave the children a vision of hell. Okay? A vision of hell. Again, remember these are seven, eight, nine year olds. Okay, uh, she gave them a vision of hell. Okay, and Mary says, and again I quote, "You have seen hell, where the souls of poor sinners go. To save future souls, God wishes to establish in the world the devotion to my immaculate heart. If people do what I tell you, many souls will be saved." She then goes on to talk about Russia. Okay, uh, and this was another prophetic message from Mary. Okay saying that uh, if people listen to what she says and do and does and, and if people do what she says okay uh, that Russia will be converted okay uh, and it really I mean doesn't really mean much to us right now kind of but uh, back then Russia was was kind of a threat they were kind of on the bubble with with becoming kind of crazy okay they're right on the bubble okay and so they were talking she was talking about Russia being converted and there will be peace if not, Russia will scatter her errors, and many people will be persecuted. Many innocent people will be persecuted. Okay, the good will be martyred, and again, she says the Holy Father will have much to suffer. Okay, and various nations will be destroyed, and that's really annoying. Okay, mm -hmm. um, she says she doesn't leave it all doom and gloom. Okay, at the end, she says, uh, in the end, my immaculate heart will triumph. If the Holy Father will consecrate Russia to me, Russia will be converted, and a certain period of peace will be granted to the world. Okay, and then she finally ends the apparition by saying, When you recite the rosary, say at the end of each decade, O my Jesus, forgive us our sins, save us from the fires of hell, and lead all souls to heaven, especially those in most need of thy mercy. So you probably have heard that or prayed that often, okay? Um, that was the first time anyone had ever heard that prayer. Okay, so the prayer that we say at the end of each decade... Uh, that prayer was introduced, was given by Mary uh, to us on that day, okay, July 13th, 1917. Yeah, Mitch. It's uh, called the Fatima Prayer and it's usually um, associated with Glory Be in the Rosary. Yes, but the Glory Be ends the decade and then the Fatima Prayer. And it's called the Fatima Prayer because it was revealed at Fatima, okay? So, moving on, September 13th. By this point, by this point, 50,000 people were, were joining the children. Uh, 
to, they couldn't see the apparition. Mary only appeared to those three children. Okay, but 50,000 people were following them to the site of the apparition. Okay. Again, she reminds them, I want you to come here on October 13th and that you continue to recite the rosary to obtain the end of the war. In October, the Lord, the Sorrowful Lady, the Lady of Mount Carmel, and St. Joseph with the Child of Jesus will also come to bless the world. God is glad of your sacrifices. She's encouraging the children. Okay? God is glad of your sacrifices. Okay? And so, the big day, October 13th, the one that she had been talking about since she first appeared in May. Okay? 70,000 people show up. Okay? At noon, it is pouring rain. Okay? It is absolutely pouring rain. And yet, the sun appears through the clouds and starts dancing in the sky. Okay? And the sun was, was it, it was in such a way that it looked like, like a screen was almost in front of it, so you could actually look at the sun. Okay? If you looked at the sun now or during the day, like your eyes would be burned. Okay? You would go blind. Okay? But there was like a, a screen in front of the sun that you could look at it. Okay? And the sun began spinning and dancing, and colors shot out from the sun. Okay, he was dancing in the sky. Okay, and did it three times, and then it looked as if it was falling towards the earth. Okay, then it returned to its normal position and appearance. And even though it had been pouring rain for hours before, this miracle, which didn't last longer than five, six minutes, the people's clothes were completely dry completely dry okay despite this uh, shocker the world ignored her message okay the world ignored Mary's message granted you know cell phones weren't invented nobody took a video of this okay uh, you know not that not that we should need video evidence to believe things uh, especially when Mary's the one telling them uh, but there were reporters there you know obviously word was getting out because 70 people 70,000 people showed up okay uh, the world knew about this but they saw it as a gimmick they didn't actually listen to what she was saying they didn't actually do what she asked them to do and so what were the consequences what were the consequences 22 years after Mary appeared and, and promised that if people listened to what she did a period of peace would happen uh, World War two broke out okay 60 million dead over half of those were civilians okay the Holocaust the atomic bomb a broken Europe countries destroyed countries written off the map all right huge consequence prophetic okay prophetic Mary said if you do this there will be peace if you do not stuff's gonna go down all right stuff went down we had talked earlier about a pope who was to suffer much. Okay? Uh, that ended up being Pope John Paul II. Okay? St. John Paul the Great. Uh, in 1981, on May 13th, he was shot in St. Peter's Square. Okay? There was an assassination attempt on St. John Paul the Great. On, on the 60, 64th, anniversary of the apparitions of Fatima okay the prophetic word that Mary was to speak okay uh, that a Pope was to come who was to suffer much for the sins of the world okay uh, was fulfilled in, with st. John Paul the Great okay and if you remember she tied it into uh, the errors of Russia okay the errors of Russia the assassin was Russian Okay. And then she talked about Russia, okay? And that is another consequence. Okay, the destructive hand of Russia with the rise and fall of communist Soviet Union, countries were eradicated, written off the map, people suffered, Stalin was murdering people left and right. Okay? And and Mary warned them. Mary told the world what was going to happen. And they didn't listen. Now, again, getting back to the, the history of all this, you might be sitting there going, yeah, okay, cool, like a bunch of stuff happened 100 years ago, uh, the stuff that Mary said came true, but it's all, it's all happened, 
Okay, it's all happened. Okay, uh, what does it what does it actually mean for me? Okay, really, it's it's the devotion to the Immaculate Heart of Mary. Okay, Mary often at each of the apparitions, Mary spoke of a personal conversion, praying daily, asking. Or, or doing, she said, do everything that God asks. Okay? She asked for a devotion to the Immaculate Heart of Mary, which we discussed earlier, leads to her son. Okay? It leads to her son. She spoke of hell. Okay? She spoke of hell. And it's, it's an uncomfortable thing to talk about. Okay? No one really likes talking about hell. And... We often talk about, you know, God is merciful, God is loving, and it's true. It's very true. He is. He is all loving, and he is merciful beyond understanding. Okay? But I think that we get too comfortable with the notion that God is all loving, uh, and we think, if he's all loving, if he loves me, he won't, he couldn't possibly let me go to hell. And that's where, that's where we're, we're wrong essentially, okay? Hell is a real place. Because here's the thing, God is all loving. God is all loving. But, it takes two people to love. If I love my wife, but she doesn't love me back, that's not really love, okay? That's kind of a creepy stalker issue, okay? <laughs> all right? Love needs to be returned. Love needs to be freely accepted and then freely given. So we have a choice to play in this. <clears throat> okay? We have a choice to play in this. God loves us, and he loves us more than we will ever understand. But, but we need to accept it. Okay? We have a choice. And, and you might think, well, well, that choice is easy. You know, obviously I choose to accept God's love. But the issue is, is it's not just our words that God is concerned about. God's concerned about our actions as well. Words mean very little. Okay? God wants you to live your life as a response to that love. As a response to his love. Okay? And this is it. This is the bottom line of the Fatima apparitions. Okay? Through a devotion to Mary, the Queen of Heaven, uh, we can be assured of heaven ourselves. Okay? Jesus loves his mother so much that all those who honor her, and again, note the difference between honoring and worshiping, okay? We give her honor because she is the, the queen of heaven. She is the mother of God. We honor her for, her for her role in salvation, okay? And so Jesus loves his mother so much that all those who honor her will have eternal life. We honor Mary because she is the surest way to her son. Everything she does is for his glory. Everything she does points to him, leads us to him, okay? We can never love Mary more than Jesus did or Jesus does, okay? We can never love Mary more. So you, you can never be worried about, well, if I love Mary too much, then I'm taking away from Jesus. It doesn't work like that. Mary's taking that love and that, that devotion to her sacred heart, her immaculate heart, sorry, and, and directing it to her son. We will grow deeper into our relationship with Jesus through her mother. The prayers that we pray through Mary, okay, we ask Mary's intercession often. We close our, our life nights with the Hail Mary, asking Mary's intercession. She takes our prayers, and and what we say is, is not perfect, okay? Uh, I don't mean like perfect words, but our desires are not perfect. Father spoke about it tonight in his homily on prayer. Uh, oftentimes our prayers aren't really aligned with God's will. We're not praying that God's will be done. We're praying that we convince God that our will is better, okay? And so what Mary is doing is she's taking our prayers, she's purifying them because we are imperfect, we're not asking for the right things, and she's presenting them to her son. And she's presenting them to her son. Um, and it was explained. It was explained this way, okay? If if I were to go to uh, your mom, Jared and I asked her for something, and you went to your mom and asked her for something, no, that was backwards. Let me start again. If I were to go 
to you and ask you for something, and your mom were to go to you and ask you for something, who would you be more likely to uh, grant that request? Probably my mother. Probably your mother, depending on what she's asking, right? Okay. Um, Jesus is the same way. Okay. Not that he doesn't hear our prayers when we pray to him. Okay. This isn't like a prerequisite to have your prayers answered. Okay. Jesus will hear your prayers. But you can be assured that our prayers are purified. Our desires, what we're praying for, is is oriented correctly when we pray them through Mary. She takes our prayers and our our broken desires, okay, uh, and she she purifies them and presents them to her son. Okay. There were many great saints uh, who had very strong devotions to Saint or to, to Mary. Okay. Saint John Paul the Great was one of them. Okay. Uh, very strong devotion to Our Lady. St. Maximilian Kolbe. St. Louis de Montfort was another one. Okay? He says this. He says this quote, which is good. Okay? He also says this. Consecrating yourself to Jesus through his mother, Mary, is the quickest, easiest, surest, and most perfect way of becoming a saint. I don't know about you, but I want to become a saint. I want to become a saint. And we can be assured that through Mary... We will become a saint. While on the cross, Jesus looked down and said, uh, and said, Behold your mother to St. John. Okay? He says the same thing to us. Praying the rosary, having a strong devotion to Mary, and having a strong devotion to Mary is allowing her to work, sorry, is allowing her to walk with us and lead us to heaven, lead us to her son. Now, uh, Heather had mentioned in the promo, and uh, and again upstairs, uh, I think you mentioned it, the three secrets of Fatima, okay? This is a common misconception, okay? Uh, I know you're all really excited, like, I want to know a secret. Like, is she going to foretell the end of the world? Like, what's going to happen? Um, the three secrets are these, okay? The first one is the vision of hell, okay? That's commonly referred to as the first secret, okay? Was the vision of hell that she gave to the, the three children. The second secret is the devotion to her Immaculate Heart, okay? The secret that through the devotion to her Immaculate Heart, uh, you can be all but guaranteed entrance into heaven, okay? The third secret, uh, which wasn't revealed until 2000, so this is where the, the, the idea of the secrets come to be. The third secret was written down by Lucia, so Jacinta and uh, Francisco uh, died shortly after these apparitions. The Spanish flu, uh, they, they passed away uh, a few years after these apparitions. Just uh, Lucia lived uh, until 2004? 2004. So she lived a very long life. Okay? And so this third secret, she wrote it down and she presented it to the Pope uh, in 1960. And she said that she did this because she thought, she felt, and, and through prayer, she felt that it was better received at that time than if it was in 1917, okay? And the third secret was the Pope who was to suffer much, the Pope who was to be shot, okay? Uh, it ended up being a vision that Mary had given to the children. It wasn't just what she said, but Mary gave him a vision of a man dressed in white uh, like a Pope who was shot by a gun. Okay? Uh, and so she wrote that down and gave it to the Pope in 1960. So it was technically a secret. No one really knew about it. Um, and the Popes knew, like the Popes read the secret when they became Pope. Not right away, but during their papacy they would read the secret and they would know the secret. Um, pope John Paul the Great didn't read the secret until after he had been shot. Okay, uh, He didn't read the secret that a Pope was to suffer much until after he had been almost assassinated, okay? Um, and he revealed the secret to the public in the year 2000, okay? So those are the three secrets of Fatima. The, the secrets aren't really the important part, okay? I mean, yes, they are actually important, but the notion of secrets uh, doesn't really hold any weight. The, the, the important part uh, is that we understand that through Mary, through a devotion to her Immaculate Heart, 
uh, we can get to heaven. Okay, so I just want to end uh, with a video. Now, when it comes to expressing our love to Our Lady and Marian devotions and prayers, some people get a little fearful or hesitant. They think, well, you know, praying the rosary, isn't that kind of like, you know, you're doing 10 Hail Marys for Our Lady, then God gets one bead, then Mary gets 10 more. I mean, it kind of seems like an unfair amount. But what they don't understand is that the rosary is a meditation on the life of Christ. And as one man had said, as long as Jesus loves Mary more than you do, you can always love her more. Now, why should we give her this love? Well, she's our mother. When Christ was on the cross, he saved one of his best gifts for last. When he said to the beloved disciple John, and therefore to us also, behold your mother. She's our mother, spiritually speaking. And understand, she knows what it's like to be a teenager. Think about it. I mean, she was a teenager who was pregnant, who everyone thought was perfect. I mean, could you imagine the gossip? Could you imagine the suffering that she went through, casting her cares up to God? So she knows what it's like to be a teenager. And we can therefore ask her to pray for us during the trials that we're going through. And look at what the saints have said about her. St. John Vianney said that the heart of Mary is so kind, so warm, so tender, that those of all other mothers united would be but a block of ice compared to hers. St. Alphonsus Liguori said, I do not fear devils, for you, Mary, are more powerful than the whole of hell. So when should you pray to Our Lady? Pray to her in moments of temptation. Pray to her when you wake up in the morning. Pray to her while you're driving to school, while you're waiting in line. Anytime is a good time to pray to Our Lady. Also, how? How can you pray to her? Well, there's all kinds of different Marian prayers. You can do novenas to Our Lady. Images. Get some holy pictures of Our Lady or a statue. Put that in your room. Have it be the screensaver on your computer to help you to avoid temptations there. And heck, you can use a, a wallpaper on your cell phone of a picture of Our Lady that remind you to have good conversations on the phone and good text messages as well. You can go on pilgrimages to places where Our Lady has appeared in apparitions, whether it be Mexico City, Our Lady of Guadalupe. You could go to Portugal, where Our Lady appeared as Our Lady of Fatima. Or when I was in college, I had the blessing of going to southern France, where she appeared as Our Lady of Lourdes to St. Bernadette, and known for its miracles of healing. And while I was there, what I prayed for is healing of my memories of all the pornography that I had seen all through high school. Just asking Our Lady, just help me to cleanse my mind so I can properly look at women as your daughters instead of just objects for my gratification. So understand that devotion to Mary is not just something for elderly ladies. It's for all of us who need as many graces as we can possibly get to live out this Christian life. Or just start simple. Offer just, just the petal of a rose. Say her name. Just say the name of Mary. St. Bonaventure said, men do not fear a powerful, hostile army as the powers of hell fear the name and the protection of Mary. If saying the name of Mary is a prayer in itself, like handing her a rose petal, saying the full Hail Mary is like giving her a single rose. But greater than that, give her the entire bouquet of them. Say the entire rosary. In fact, Pope Adrian VI said the rosary is the scourge of the devil. But what's greater than giving her a Hail Mary or a, a bouquet of roses and a rosary is Marian consecration, giving her yourself total entrustment to Our Lady. And what this is, is basically a gift of self and a promise of love, where you say to Our Lady, I give myself totally to you, and I ask for all of your intercessory prayers for me, that I can live out my baptismal promises to follow in the footsteps of Christ more faithfully than I ever have before. And don't be afraid of doing this. Don't be afraid of making a gift of yourself to Our Lady, because just as Jesus came to us through Our Lady, so too is it fitting that we return to him through her. So after hearing all these great quotes from the saints, where are we supposed to go from here? What I would recommend, get a rosary, keep it in your pocket. Pray it every single day. If you can't do that, okay, just a Hail Mary every day. And if you can't do that, again, just the name of Mary. Stay faithful to these little devotions and she'll lead you closer and closer to Christ. Mm -hmm.